There are many videos on YouTube showing new types of turbines spinning in the wind. After watching most of these videos, I'm always left wondering if these turbines can produce any power. This is one of my first attempts at building a wind turbine. It has three elliptical wings that are 9 inches wide by 1 half inch thick. The wings are mounted 8 inches from the center of rotation and the whole turbine is 2 feet tall. The wings are cut from foam insulation that you can buy at Home Depot and covered with colored packaging tape to add stiffness and to give it a smooth finish. With no load, the wings move at 2 to 3 times the speed of the wind, yet the turbine makes very little noise. I'll go to the camera mic and let you hear for yourself. You can hear a little sound today. Uh, I think that's mostly the flapping of the tape, who sets the tape. The other noise you hear is traffic coming from that road in the distance. And my pole shaking. This is basically a temporary mounted fixture. I plan to measure the power output today. But before I do, let's calculate the power I would expect from a turbine of this size. The power of the wind is equal to one half times the area swept out by the turbine times the density of air times the velocity of the wind cubed. Use kilograms, meters, and seconds to get watts. In my case, the area of my turbine is about a quarter meter squared. The density of air here at 6,000 feet is about 1.0 kilograms per cubic meter. At sea level, it's closer to 1.2. The speed of the wind today is 15 miles per hour, which is 6.7 meters per second. This comes out to 40 watts of power in the wind. Unfortunately, it's impossible for a turbine to catch all that power. Good turbines can catch maybe 50%, so I'd like to see about 20 watts of power out of this turbine today. The next step in my testing is to measure the open circuit voltage of my alternator. I do this mainly to find out if I'm dealing with dangerous voltages or not. It's around 25 volts. While all electricity should be respected, this voltage probably won't hurt me. And now we get to the meat of the testing, measuring the power. This is what I'm going to use for a test load. It's a string of Radio Shack 10 watt resistors, all wired in series. I have two 100 ohm, then two 50 ohm, then six 10 ohm resistors. By clipping onto this at various points, I can get multiples of 10 ohms between 0 and 360. I need to take measurements at various loads because I don't know what the perfect load is for this turbine. These are my meters. The upper meter reads the current in amps, the meter on the lower right reads the voltage, and the device on the left is my weather station that shows the wind speed. There are several ways to use these meter readings to calculate the power at the load. The first would be to simply multiply the voltage times the current. However, that requires that you actually read those two values at the same time. The method I prefer is to use the current squared times the load resistance. Another way would be to use the voltage squared divided by the resistance. All three methods should give you the same answer. What I did next was connect an assortment of load resistances and measure the power. This graph shows the power at the load versus the load resistance. Since I'm trying to measure my turbine and not my alternator, I'd like to also include the power lost in the alternator coils. I can calculate this using the equation power equals current squared times resistance. I know the resistance of my alternator coils is 46 ohms because I measured them earlier. The pink line on this graph shows the lost power. Finally, if I add the two types of power together, I get the total power created by the turbine. This is shown in yellow on this graph. This graph shows me two things. The first is that my alternator and my turbine are not a good match. The turbine produces most of its power under conditions where the alternator wastes most of it. The second and more important thing that it shows me is that I only saw 5 watts today. I was hoping for 20. 
My turbine isn't very efficient, and I need to go back and work on my wing designs. So, I guess the final lesson of this video is, just because it spins in the wind, doesn't make it a good turbine.